Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show you how to play Talon Mid. This is a champ that has been doing well in solo queue almost every single year. Like his win rate is always super high. And that's because he is so good at roaming and that's how you climb in solo queue by having map pressure. And W, pretty standard to go level 1. It's like your range ability is going to help you last hit without getting poked too much. It deals damage twice and it also gives you two as a procs. Your passive is uh, going to proc when you um, hit the opponent with three or like abilities, like three stacks. So for example, your W gives you two stacks if you hit with both parts of it. And then your Q is going to give you a stack and then you auto attack the opponent and the passive procs. And the returning part of this W, that's where most of the damage is at. And it also happens to slow. Oh, that's a pretty sick TF skin. Bro, that looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. So level 2, as I said, this is why you start proccing the passive, so it's a big spike for Talon. Now we're gonna try to force trades. That's a passive proc. And he's out. So if you use your Q from range, it's going to be like a dash onto the opponent, a single target damaging ability. But if you use it in melee range, it's instead going to be a normal auto attack that also crits. And it's also going to give you a um, auto attack reset. That's great for high DPS, but it's really good for using for gap closing. And if you kill something with it, you're going to get um, half of the cooldown refunded. And it also gives you some HP back for the sustain. And this C is basically what makes him a really OP Roma because you can jump over terrain and get to other parts of the map really fast. Ridiculously fast. The first item is going to be the Humus Ghost Blade, huge spike. I'm just going to wait on so I can afford the boots and then you jump over these terrain um, structures here. Just to get back to lane a bit faster. Who's pinging? Bit annoying. We'll fix that later. Just the over, guys. Let's you get back to lane a bit faster. You basically just click on the other side of the structure. Otherwise, you might end up messing it up. Because then you do this kind of uh, side parkour. That can potentially mean that you end up dying. He might be roaming top. Hope he's not. Also gonna max the W, so same thing. You're looking for that uh, gap closing. So if you use another card that is not the gold one, then we could engage. I went in a bit too early. For example, this right here would be great. So if I had the queue up, I would just engage straight up. But the level 2 spike is really massive on Talon. That's what you're looking to abuse because that's why you can proc the passer relatively fast and it just deals a ridiculous amount of damage and no mage can match that. Besides maybe a Cassiopeia. Then again, she doesn't really have the mana to uh, spam her stuff early on. There might be a 3-man top with a cane as well. He doesn't have flash out though. Pretty nice that she survived. Gonna give her some vision. Where did brother Twisted Fate go? Oh, nice one. Nice kiting. Let's do some parkour magic. Oh, he's level 6. Dead. I have level 6, so it's okay. That probably has a stop you back up again, so I'm not gonna go in. This ultimate makes you invisible, first of all. And then it's going to, like, um, damage as well. 
and then it can be recasted or when it expires it's going to damage once more and all of these blades that pop out if you auto tag an enemy champ or you queue them you're going to make it so all of the blades are going to um, target that champ but it's aoe damage and that's also another ability that gives you a passive stack how does he die what hey what he played so well previously i don't know how she died He's level 6. I need to not... Uh... Your allegiances nothing to me. Okay, that's good. I don't want to recall here because it's gonna allow him to uh, do his TP thingy with his holds. Oh, they got this under control. No worries, they don't need my help. Good job, guys. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, no flash on the twisted face, so that's going to be awesome when I get my flash up. Just go back to pushing. And as I said, like if you watch my other AD Assassin videos, I really love to get Hydra. Due to the massive buffs it gives to uh, the wave clear and also burst in general. I can't just flash him to get the kill, but uh, I think I might be able to get him still later. You can also like Q to a minion and then W him if he's like super far away. But the main thing is that you don't let him roam and... Um, An ult? Bro, I don't have mana. That blows. Actually, sucks. That sucks. He would have been dead, but I trolled. It's why I sometimes run presence of mind. Talon isn't really reliant on it, but it's still really nice to have. Especially if you get a takedown, then you get some mana back again. Wave is in a terrible spot, but I'm just gonna back off. I guess it's TP'd. Now we have the Yumus. So it's a pretty unique case right here because we're playing against another heavy Roma. So it's probably better to me for me to just shut him down when he tries to roam because his ultimate has a high cooldown. And you know, I can just roam permanently with my E. So if I shut him down once and then I start roaming, that's great. But it's not like you must roam to win like if you're able to get kills then that's also great as long as you get fed because then you can use that lead to like pressure the other lanes so there's one way you can engage is that you Q onto the enemy champ and then you w it's important that you hit with the returning part of your w because it slows and it also deals the most amount of damage Sometimes I like to wait over here. It's better if I had a ward on the side. It sounds strange, but Twisted Fate is actually a pretty good counter to Talon because he has point and click. DC. And his ultimate also reveals you because he gets true sight. On team fights, it's pretty hard for you to um, look for kills against the Twisted Fate or other players. Okay, they know, so that's a ward somewhere that it is. You can just tell how they're backing off immediately. The moment I stepped out, so that means that it's warded somewhere. Oops. Bro, I'm an actual, I'm an actual ape. What am I doing? Okay. This did not end up in a kill. First of all, I trolled it big time. If I had to queue up, it would have been dead.
Like he would have been. Wait, this guy has tear. Wait, what? What is this man doing? Wondering why he's so fast. It's okay you're getting like what tier one boots, but why do you rush tier twos? Don't get it. And that was a complete free kill if I did not troll it. And yes, even I make mistakes sometimes. And trust me, it hurt my eyes just as much as it did to you guys. Oh, I don't have mana. Okay, got an assist. Let's go. I'm not gonna walk in though. I'm gonna tank a fully stacked passive. I'm gonna try to push this in case he tries to dive our bot. Right, so you're gonna get the tier twos right now, just to make you even faster at roaming. I'm gonna try to help bot now. It's about time. Swifties are great. I also like to run uh, Mercs against the Twisted Fate, but that's mainly if they also have other heavy CC. It's not too much CC on their comp. Now we are super fast as well. So show and roam guys, that's the plan. And Edge of Night, something I recommend against the Twisted Fate specifically. Because it makes it really hard for him to um, do anything against you. He has to invest a important ability in order to uh, take out the shield. Similar to like any, they can't just you know take it out freely. They have to invest something important into uh, destroying. I, I also like to wait here sometimes if they come and check. He has not been roaming, so that's perfect. Bro, are you kidding me? I'm not gonna escape this time around. Let's go. And that's why you have the Yumus. You can see how fast you can chase people. He died top lane, but he's farming pretty well, so I think it's okay. It's not um, end of the world. But... Talent's all about getting that passive proc. You don't get the passive proc, you know, like the mistake I made early on. You lose so much damage. So I think I'll be waiting here again because Twisted Fate might be coming for another room. So I'm going to do the same thing. Your turret has been destroyed. And hanging his flash so Lilia knows because her ultimate is up. And he's dead. That's why I did not base. This is also how I try to, you know, when you play assassins and you're playing against these room type of champs or like mages who can shove in room. Like a champ like Victor, for example, he can shove pretty fast when he gets this upgrade. Most champs would be looking to roam here because they were pretty low, low on mana. And they will come for a counter gank. Especially the Twisted Fate. Point and click. That's also how you can play Assassins. Like, you try to predict where they'll be going after showing out the wave, and then you just camp in that spot. Probably gonna ult top. In that case, I just push mid. A lot easier to push once you have the Hydra. But his lane is completely wrecked now. He has not been able to get a single good ult off yet. Oh no, that's not looking good. Or is it? Okay, it is. Wait here again, he might come. Yeah, he wore it. You're not gonna let him. He was smart to get this one, but we stop him from roaming and that's what's important. Love to get this one before it expires. Can I get it though? 
Okay, now that's not good anymore. How do you int into this lane? Like, it should be really easy for Zeri to farm. Not in the lane, so I don't know what's happening. She should stop chasing. Then no point in me uh, moving up there. We just focus on pushing. Why are we rotating before taking out the towers? It's really easy for me to look for kills when the tower's out, but when it's not, it makes it really safe for the... Bro, what? Wait, what? Hello? Yeah, good luck. I'm not going against the set. Then we are giving up the towers. I had a feeling this was going to happen. Oh my days. Oh my days, I'm getting thrown around. Oh, he's so tilted. And I pushed mid. They can uh... Oh no. Oh, he had the ult up. What's the chance? Lilia double kill? Okay, that's fine. We'll take it. We're getting a tower as well. Awesome. And now we have the Hydra. So these are like the two core items. Making up a lot of your early game damage, your roam potential, and also your wave clear. You're getting like everything from these items. And now it's situational what you're getting. As I said, against the Twisted Fate and also this champ, Edge of Night is awesome. So that will be the next item. But if they were building a lot of armor, then you'll be getting the Cyrildas. Axia Mark is something I might get later on due to the ultimate refund. Oh, we're getting another Drake. Awesome. Pretty lucky I dodged the uh, support CC back then. Otherwise, I would have been uh, gone for sure. We'll see how much faster your E is, guys. Oh no, we're not getting the third ray. Okay, I should have been there then. I thought it was pretty safe, that's why I did not. I'm gonna pop the Yumus, because seems like I need to be there fast. Nice W. Okay, this so he cannot ult me. Got this, I'm not gonna chase him. Good job. Lost the Drake, but we have a fit ADC and Lulu and that champ. Which... That stuff I perma ban in high elo because it's impossible to play around. Like you can never kill the AD carry. They won't survive. You can push right. On the blue. And the passive also works on the jungle camp, so that's why I tell on jungle also works if you like to play him that way. Then that's also an option. But if you're in melee range and using that Q, it's really important that you Remember to use it as an auto tag reset. Because on top of, um, you know, being a guaranteed crit, it's also an auto tag reset. And that's going to be beneficial at all points in the game. Not only early on, but also late game or mid game. At all stages of the game. At this point, you know, we are in the mid game. I like to hover around the map. So this guy, obviously, we can not even think about doing anything to him. So Seri needs to go top. Because Talon, assassins can't do anything against Bruces. You just get demolished. Seri is moving top, that's great. Then I can just back off here. Gonna get the items towards... Edge of Night is going to be huge against the Twisted Fate. And then same thing, hold around the jungle guys, constantly shadow like your players. If they're getting caught, you can be there pretty fast. Oh, that trap. 
Still gonna die, right? Okay, that's that's fine. That's worth it. Oh, okay. Watch out for his CC. I think I just go bot at this point. The block. I could also hover. Right. Oh, he's surviving. Nope, he isn't. Remember, you cannot perma dash over the wall because if you see this color right here, that means that um, it's on cooldown. It's an indicator for when you can actually jump over it again. Otherwise, that would be super busted. I think I can just stay. I have rip off, so I'm gonna heal. And the ultimate is up as well. Look at how fast you can get around the map. That's why this champ has a constant high win rate all seasons. Because the way you climb fast in solo queue is through map pressure. People tilt really hard from it. Should not be here and switch to fade ults. I need to peace out and I need to not recall right here and just keep running. So I will not be within his ultimate range. I can still flash away. I think I would definitely survive. But now we have the Edge of Night. It's going to be a massive counter against champs like the Twist of Fate, Gragas, Annie. And any hard CC champ. Because Twist of Fate and Annie, they only have two abilities to proc it if you don't count Annie's ults. I should never use that ultimate to proc um, a shield. So they have to invest something important in to take out that shield, so that means that they cannot win the fight. I'll just keep pushing bot side. It's really easy to show out the um, waves when you have the Hydra. Because usually there's like minions surviving with 1 HP, but the active proc, bam, wave is gone really fast. Just a fade FK. I think I'm gonna move anyways, so we don't risk him getting a... The Drake. Looks like my man went uh, AFK. Also against the set is also pretty nice actually. They don't get caught out of position. They're still coming seems like. I'll take this and peace out. Where's the uh... There she is. Why can't she do that, by the way? That's pretty strange. Strange that she was not revealed. Oh, barrier. Blows. I also think I did not get to proc my passive. My bad. Wait, did I have the ultimate up? I think it was on Kula, no? Otherwise, I could definitely have uh, survived it. And gotten the kill as well. So now, not really any armor coming in. That's a little bit here. But it's still great to get this item. You also get the slow component. I'm just gonna start with the Brutalizer. Then get the uh, flat armor pen. Later. Looks like he did indeed rage quit. Brother 0 and 6. Let's finish this. They should be able to deal with that pretty easily. If it was high elo and I see a Lulu switch or a Cogmouth, I'm dodging. I'm not playing that. It's, it's really broken. And it has been broken every single season. Because even if the AD carry O extends and gets caught, they just become unkillable due to the Lulu. 
And then them also being a hyper carry, they're gonna wipe out the entire team. That's the power of the shield, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why he ults it. Oh, that's a great engage. We go for the cane. We ain't getting him. He might come this way up, let's see. Nope. He isn't. This is on cooldown, so I cannot jumbo and get the kill. Getting the Baron, and then we're probably gonna end on the next push. They saw me, so I'm not gonna wait. I'm just gonna buy this item and then we'll um, wrap up the game. So next item, I will just go for the Axio Mark. You actually have... It's like half a minute cooldown on this ult, so it's not like you need it either. And just get something else. Serpent's Fang is something I really like to get if they have a lot of shielding. They don't really have it here. But like they have a Janna or Rihanna or like a Lulu. Serpent's Fang is awesome. Now, remember, you're playing an assassin, so you're going for the carries mainly. They're going to be your main target. To bail out AE. Wait, where's my shield? Oh, I guess that was the trap. I kinda need the shield though. I like to just, you know, get around this way. So that's it for the first game. Unfortunately, this guy went AFK, but that's so cute. And as usual, we're gonna take one more game, you know, to show different matchups and also different scenarios. So, uh, GG. Let's get it. Now we are playing against what I assume is the fifth mid. Otherwise, I would actually like to swap because the uh, Nasus. I mean, I guess it's okay mid. But the uh, fifth is what I would call a skill based matchup. Because if you get hit by his ultimate, you're pretty much dead. It gives him true sight. So even if you ult, you will be revealed and you're gonna get hit by everything and then he also has a C which makes it so you can basically never hit your W so you can always dodge it if he wants to so it's a matchup where you have to be really patient and time the cooldowns you know for example when he uses a C to like wave clear that's when you're looking to trade and also constantly keep an eye on his ultimate timer for example if you use this ultimate, that's a chance for you to play aggressive. And when this ultimate is up, I actually like to try to intentionally walk in a straight line towards him because a lot of the times it's enough to bait out his ults. And then I try to like sidestep in the last possible second. They can start a seal at one by the way. Because then he gets to dodge your W and also hit the minion still. Like this. If you get level 2 first, I can give you a massive advantage in this uh, matchup. Nice, okay. He's using his C, that's fine. Because I'm gonna get level 2 first, so now I can look for a chance. If I get this minion, since the C is on cooldown, because we intentionally took it out. Oh, that blows, he got level 2 first. Sucks. He also backed off. It's because like uh, it went under the tower, right? Imagine I got the passive proc, he would have been dead. 
But it's important that you also trade back against assassins if you don't. They're gonna con he's gonna constantly do this and then you just end up dead. And if you fall behind in this lane, good luck. And use the Q a bit to heal up. This is why he becomes a bit dangerous. He has a lot of damage and he also has great escape potential. One hit. If he engages onto me with two passive procs on him, I can just all in. Like I can let him engage on purpose and then all in him. But it's all about that passive proc. You're looking to get three stacks and then proc it with an auto attack. And you're gonna win. Oh man, that sucks. He actually survived. First blood. Don't cross me. I think he was like what in one HP. I cannot stay. Plus, um, this is a lot better at picking up these low HP kills than Talon is, so he can always see and then kill me. No flash on the car six. No flash on the fist. So it's worth it for me, like this trade we did right here, because they invested more, but still sucks a bit that I did not get the kill. Oh, he's so lucky, man. He's so lucky. But the wave is in a good spot. They should just let it push. It actually loses something. And I'm gone. I also like to, even though I already pinged the flashes, I like to do it a bit later as well. But sometimes your teammates don't see it and this just makes it easier for them to uh, play around it. Let's go, no flash on him. Time to punish, if he jumps over he's dead. Oh, the cast UP at W, nice one. Sucks though, like look at my wave. But he got punished this time for flashing at me. And this is what he does, right? He can actually keep doing this. Because his E makes him untargetable, so I had to bid out his uh, E. I think I'll do it here. Wait. Okay, that's fine. I had to beg off once again. Because I'm low on mana, so unless there are some fruits around... Let's and let's hope that Brother K6 is not hovering me once again. When are the fruits up, by the way? Almost. There we go. Good timing. Bot lane is doing beautiful. He got this, so I don't need to move. He got level 6, so this is why it's risky. You get hit by this ultimate, you're gonna be revealed because it gives him true sight, so you're dead. Right now, I should not be stepping up. He has his ignite up as well. He can like Q through an ult. I should not be here. Actually, I should be backing off. So it's pretty troll down. I'm staying. I also don't have the flash up. Oh, what? He's dead. Oh, he leveled up. I had to make sure. Now we got level 6 finally. I had to be careful, I could not go in immediately, because, you know, if I get tagged by the ults, I'm just dead. I don't have any thumbs up. That could help me escape. He gave me mid, that's why um, it was uh, swapped. Items, the same. Same stuff. 
Like the last game, nothing changes there. You can get a control ward. And then just parkour back to lane. And especially in this matchup, it would make sense to just try to roam as much as possible because it's pretty difficult to look for kills onto Fizz. And if he gets to push in the wave, then he can keep like, you know, trading with you under the tower and then E out. He could be trying to dive bot. Yeah, here he is. I'm gonna see if I can get there. Probably can't. Gonna give a vision. Yeah, I think she's fine. Wait, where did he go? Wait, what? Oh, there he is. That was a good trade, actually. Okay, at least he did not engage, so that's fine. We got body blocked, I could almost have died there. Just need to keep poking him. Add to cannon. Let's go and look for the fruits. We love the fruits. This is a really good thing to do if you're like uh, going even in the matchup and you're getting low. Instead of being forced to reset. And go and look for the vitamins. Yes, and she even survived because of it. That's perfect. All because I went for the vitamins. I am giving up CS but... It's worth it so far. Once we go ahead and reset, we're gonna have enough gold for the Yumus. That's why your roaming becomes, you know, pretty good due to the mobility. Top lane is doing awesome. And since we have double AP, Talon's a good pick here. Um, but don't pick him if you have too much AD, because you get countered so hard by armor. And if they have tanky come, also avoid picking assassins like Talon. Because you know, you can't do anything. Assassins are great into squishy teams. This is why Tiamat is so good, you know, because it's so annoying when the minions survive with 1 HP because you have to waste time auto tagging them. To get that, he could be camming here, but well, let's go anyways. Oh, she's gone. Oh, sucks, I did not get the kill. That was a lot of burst, and the AD carry survives, so I think that's worth it. Invisible ward. Back to lane. I could also wait here sometimes. Then they come and you can smack them. I'm gonna take this one out. Make it harder for the Karsix. The rushed boots. He's also looking to roam, seems like. See, this is so annoying. That's where the Tiamat and the Hydra comes in. It's going to improve your way clear so much. Get the uh, Swifties. I also like to get the Lucidity boots, by the way, guys. It's preference. But especially on Talon, I really like these boots. On Kiana or Zed, I would always go for the Lucidity ones. But on Talon, I feel like they are pretty good. And also against the Nasus, you know, the slow... Anti-slow it has, where it reduces the effect of it. Pretty good. And also the Fist ultimate slow also gets reduced. Here, for example, look for an engage because he uh, Eden. Like his key ability is the E. I 
I don't see the car six, so that's why I'm not playing aggressive now. They won't survive. If I use it like this, it's gonna engage. Nice, good job. We'll play it, Diana. Get this plate. Since we are fed, obviously our W uh, is going to shred the backline minions, but a lot of the times what's going to happen is that they survive with 1 HP and then you have to like spend extra time auto tagging them. And they could really make the difference between you getting to bot lane in time or not. Let's start getting some plates. I'm keeping an eye on the Diana. If I see a ward or cast export site. Let's get uh, to the Diana. I'm gonna pop the Yumus. I'm Kent is so tanky, man. It's actually insane. Nice. Awesome. Okay, he's back in the lane. Okay, good. Then we can uh, get plates. Hopefully, she's not getting hit by a Fizz Halt. But the plate is gonna expire in 10 seconds, so that's why I'm just pushing right now to get another one, hopefully. Nice. A lot of mistakes, actually, I made last game, but you know, I have not played Talon since the last video. You see, it's a lot cleaner. It's the same thing, you know, for every champ. The very first game, after a long time, or if you're not playing them, might end up with a lot of mistakes, but as you keep playing them, you're going to improve a lot. As long as you realize the mistakes you make and you actually try to work on them. Talon is a pretty easy jam to play as well. I like to camp in here as well, so when they come to ward, Yeah. Okay, I have to uh, come ahead a lot more damage than I expected. I believe her tether also gives a true sight. I don't quite remember, but I think so. So that would also be a counter against Talon. Now we're finally gonna get the bot side tower. Oh, and they are FF, so that was how to play Talon, guys. Really hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and see you all in the next one.